Namaste. So today I want to talk about consciousness. Now what is consciousness? Well, we've been over that in many previous videos. It's when awareness takes an object and this results in duality. And so this is the common state of most everybody in the world except those who are self-realized. The self-realized ones understand that behind consciousness is awareness, and awareness doesn't have an object, or it doesn't have to. Awareness is perfectly fine being aware of itself. So this is self-realization. Now I'm going to show exactly how to reach that state of self-realization in four simple steps. <laughs> simple, maybe not easy, but simple. This is the situation in the world. You have the subject, the self-effulgent prakash, directly seen person. And then you have the objects, which are prakriti, nature. So the subject the prime subject is Brahman. Brahman is pure awareness. But then from Brahman comes the witness, which is consciousness. Consciousness is awareness with an object. So in the beginning, the object is bliss. So this is called the Ananda Maya Kosha, which means the bliss sheath or body. What other objects does consciousness have? Well, it has intelligence, which is active mentality, and this is called the Vijnana Maya Kosha. Then it has mind, which is a reactive mentality, and that's called the Mano Maya Kosha. Then there are the senses, called Indriya in Sanskrit, hearing, sight, taste, smell, and touch. And, of course, their objects, which is the world, or jagra. So now the senses are the pranamaya kosha. And the world, which is seen through the senses, is the anamaya kosha, beginning with the body. So this is the picture of how most people see the world. And this view of the world is called dvaitavada. Dvaita means duality. It also means delusion. <laughs> because actually, there is no duality. There is only Brahman. But because our attention is turned away from Brahman toward the world, then we see so many objects. But those objects are all basically illusion. But in this state of Dvaita Vada, we can perform Karma Yoga. And by karma yoga, we gradually rise to the position of the next stage, Vishishta Dvaita Vada. Now, the only difference between Dvaita Vada and Vishishta Dvaita Vada is Jnana Tattva, the knowledge that we are actually Brahman. But look, where Jnana Tattva comes, it comes like a firewall. In a computer, you use a firewall to separate the computer internals from the network. And that ensures that only the kind of network access that you want is allowed and others are blocked. So Jnana Tattva, the knowledge that we are actually Brahman, acts as a kind of firewall between the witness, consciousness, and the objects, Prakriti. Once you know, even if it's only theoretical, even if it's only intellectual, that 
I am Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi, then you can never look at the world in the same way again. You can never quite be fully identified with the body, for example. You have to see that, wait a minute, this world looks real, but I know that it's not. And this is Vishishtadvaita, qualified non-duality. Well, when this stage is maintained for a long enough time, one graduates to the next stage. This is called Vivartavada. Now, what happens here is that the jnana tattva becomes so strong that the material world, the objects, begin to fade. And one begins to concentrate on jnana. This is vivarta. This is seeing the world as illusion. And this is the stage of meditation, raja yoga. The Buddha talked a lot about this. So what happens after some time of doing this jnana that the witness, the consciousness becomes turned towards Brahman, away from the world. This is the higher stage of Vivartivada. This is the advanced stage of meditation in which one is only aware of Brahman and the world fades in the background into insignificance. So then, eventually, the world disappears entirely. And this is called Ajatavada. In Ajatavada, one forgets about the world and is only aware of Brahman. And in the final stage of Ajatavada, only Brahman is. We forget about everything else. So here's the good old chart of the four stages. <laughs> I'm going to keep banging on this chart huh? until you guys get it. When I start getting comments using the terminology of the four Vadas, then I'll know that you guys got it. Until then, I'm going to keep uh, hitting on this point because it's vital to understanding the path. Most people only understand the section of the path that they are at. And they are in denial or in ignorance about the other stages of the path. So, for example, people in Dvaita Vada, like they're attached to sectarian religion, dualistic religion, where there's a difference between myself and God. And they deny uh, or they're ignorant of the higher stages, bhakti and raja and jnana yoga. But then once you start to meditate, once you start to get into the higher stages of bhakti, you realize, wait a minute, God is within me because I can contact God within through my practice. And that leads to the realization that Wait a minute. <laughs> there is no duality between myself and God. Once you understand this, then real meditation starts. And that continues until the world fades into the background, into insignificance. And only Brahman is left. So this is the path in a nutshell. And the four stages of the path. And these were given by Adi Shankaracharya about 1,500 years ago. And they are really, how can I say, the most important structural teaching I have ever encountered. All other teachings omit or deny or separate themselves from the other stages. But this uh, Chatur Darshanam, these four views, include everything, even Buddha's teaching, even Christianity and, and uh, Islam and Judaism, the Abrahamic religions. So <laughs> this is the most all-inclusive. This is why we call it the esoteric teaching, 
because it includes everything and it is actually the basis of everything. And we see these four stages, four levels of realization in every path, in every practice. At the, in the beginning, one is like a sectarian, and then after some time, one develops love, and that love matures into meditation. The meditation eventually becomes realization. So these are the functional descriptions of the four levels or stages of the path, the four vadas or views. Now, that implies something very important too that these views are not changing something. They're not becoming something. They're not adding something to you. They're not transforming you or the world or reality or the way things are, you know, or any of that. They're simply different points of view. The reality is always the same. The reality always is aham brahmasmi. But because we view it in a different way, we lose the perspective of seeing what is real. So there is really no effort in self-realization. Self-realization can only happen when all effort ceases. And one simply adopts the point of view of a jatavada. Now, in practice, however, <laughs> that has to happen in stages. That's why there are four views instead of just one. Because we understand in the beginning, everybody is in duality. So that's all right. Do the practices. Karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and then jnana yoga will come spontaneously out of the evolution, out of the growth, out of the maturity of the other views. So, but really, <laughs> there is no work to be done. There is nothing that you have to add or change or transform or alter or move. <laughs> or become, look, once you understand, once you realize this Ajatavada, you'll see, I have always been Brahman. I have always been pure awareness. And the only other apparent object is actually myself, Saguna Brahman. But I am Nirguna Brahman. I am without qualities, Shivoham. <laughs> once you see this, you understand, I am always aware of awareness in the present. That's all there is. That's all there ever has been or all there ever could be. This is the eternal present. So try to understand, any model of self-realization, any model of the path that requires you to change, grow, add, subtract, transform <laughs> or whatever, is actually an illusion. It's actually a flawed model. The model of the path that's real, that's eternal, that's always the way it is, is this model of the four views. That's because Brahman is always Brahman. Awareness is always aware of, of itself. Huh? That never changes. Even when we're asleep, in deep sleep at night, we're still aware that we are aware. And the proof of that is in the morning, we get up and say, ah, oh, yeah, I slept really well. How do you know? <laughs> because you were aware. So this is the key to the whole cosmos. And once you understand this, then there's nothing more to know. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.